But first, Arizona's Bighorn Sheep Translocation Program celebrated two milestones this year. First, it's our 50th anniversary, and second, it's the 100 such release. Join us as we show you the efforts to enhance the bighorn sheep population in their historic ranges. This is a landmark event for our organization. This is what we're all about. We spend thousands of hours over the year raising money to do just this kind of event. This is why we're here. This is a result of our special bighorn sheep tag fund program. We've raised over $5 million in the 20 years that it's been in existence. These types of activities are not cheap, and that requires quite a, quite a bit of funds, and, uh, and that special tag fund program provides the, the necessary funding to accomplish it. We're out here in Unit 43B at uh, Martinez Lake. We're out here today for the 100th bighorn sheep capture. The department has had a long and proud history of translocating bighorn sheep. We've been at it for 50 years now, with this being our 100th transplant. We've moved about 1,800 sheep total, and this year we'll probably top 2,000. Each sheep transplanted represents a considerable cost, both in time, manpower, and money. So why do it? One reason is as protection against catastrophic events, rather like not putting all your eggs in one basket. Randy English explains. The reason that we uh, transplant uh, sheep uh, and spread them out is um, we don't want populations to become stagnant. And over the years with uh, development projects and drought and disease and predation, uh, some of the individual groups of sheep uh, in, in specific areas have declined. So we uh, take sheep from areas where the, the populations aren't declining and we uh, transplant those into those areas uh, to supplement the sheep population there. Do these translocation efforts work? Absolutely. Back in the 50s, there were a little over 1,000 bighorn in the state. Today, thanks in part to translocation efforts that have taken place in more than 20 mountain ranges between Tucson and the Grand Canyon, plus on the Kaibab Plateau, there are just over 6,000 animals. Game and fish biologist John Russo was instrumental in our bighorn sheep transplants. The bighorn sheep captures in Arizona started in 1957. It was after a seven-year study by John Russo, who was the bighorn sheep biologist for the state at the time, uh, who was trying to evaluate the effectiveness or uh, the ability to have uh, regulated hunts as well as uh, transplanting bighorn sheep. We entered into an agreement with the Texas Wildlife and Parks and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in which sheep would be caught out of the COFA National Wildlife Refuge and sheep would be transferred to Texas as well as Arizona. And this is our 50th year as well as our 100th transplant this year. As technology changes, so do our capture and release techniques. We started out with a drop net, which was a modified version of what Colorado was using at the time uh, in the 50s, 40s and 50s. As, as technology has advanced, um, we've seen the capture equipment has changed. We've had a, uh, a dart gun um, made by the capture company. Um, we've had the code and net gun. Um, the use of helicopters has been of great assistance uh, in aiding our ability to get to where the sheep because they're in such remote territory that sometimes it's a little harder to get to them. One challenge the crews face is not overheating the sheep. For this reason, capture protocol limits chase time. Net gunner in training, Thory Smith, explains. In hot temperature, ambient temperature is 90 degrees, we shut down the capture. You know, if things get above 90, you really stress the animal and increase the chances for capture myopathy and long chase times increase that as well. So we try to limit our chases to five minutes and under. And all the ones today are pretty quick. A lot of standing and short distance runs. So if you're really running an animal, you don't want to go further than probably five minutes, you know. so. It, it depends on each uh, situation and temperature, but uh, today was, you know, as you met a film, pretty, you know, everybody came in pretty cool and pretty, pretty healthy and not too stressed out. So today was a good day for it. It started cool and got pretty warm. It's warmer than usual, but uh, still able to work with this. Once the bighorn is at the processing site, the cooling down continues. With the high value associated with each and every animal captured, the department takes no chances with the welfare of the animals. 
For that reason, the department assures that there are veterinarians on site to monitor the sheep's health. Today, we're honored to have Dr. Clancy Gansberg here to help out. I've been doing this for 21 years, started in 1986 at the Kofa cabin, as I remember. And toward the end of that capture, we were rained out. That was exciting. Once they get on the gurney, uh, immediately we try to put oxygen into them, and uh, uh, that seems to uh, calm them down and helps to cool them off. We get at them as soon as they get them disentangled from the drop net, and then we'll introduce uh, the uh, syringe and needle into the jugular, draw whatever quantity of blood we need. Sometimes while they're entangled in the net, we'll go ahead and give them the antibiotic injection and the vermifuge uh, injection, which hopefully if they have any internal parasites in the gastrointestinal system, it will take care of those. After the blood has been withdrawn, they will receive intravenous saline solution, which tends to help them cool down and increase their blood volume. Anytime we find an abrasion or any lacerations, they are taken care of by whatever means are necessary. The department is dependent on volunteers for the success of ventures like this. We definitely couldn't do it on our own. Our volunteers come from all walks of life. Department personnel work side by side with Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society members, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologists, Yuma Proving Grounds personnel, and volunteers from other dedicated organizations such as Liberty Wildlife Rehabilitation, who sent a crew to get experience handling large animals. Liberty Wildlife is here today to help out uh, Arizona Game and Fish and the Arizona Desert Bighorn Sheep Society in their efforts to transport these animals to a new location. Typically, Liberty deals in, in the, uh, the animals you're going to find around urban areas like Phoenix and Scottsdale, but uh, we do want to get more experience with larger animals since we are doing more work with some of the big corporations that uh, operate in the, the outlying areas, and we're going to be doing some work with uh, different mining companies that have to deal with bighorn sheep on a regular basis. So in, in anticipation of that activity, uh, we sent some volunteers down here today to kind of get some experience working with these kind of animals. It, this is a totally win-win deal, especially for the sheep. We transport the animals uh, overnight, so there's a long resting period for the animals prior to release. Uh, we'll usually release in the morning. Um, when the animals get there, we, we've already pre-staged, so we're set to release. Um, once we open the doors, they pretty much find their own way around in their new habitat. I got to pull, got to pull the doors open on uh, on uh, on this release, and uh, what a thrill that was! It's uh, a culmination of many many years of dedication, and uh, to see to see all of our hard work uh, finally culminating by lifting that door up and watching the sheep go to the mountain range. Being the centennial, this was a very special capture and release. So while the bighorn are finding their way around their new home. The release crew takes up a glass of sparkling cider in tribute to all who have contributed to this success story.